Okay. Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films. And today I'm going to be doing a review of the first episode of Season 4 of The Flash. This episode is titled, The Flash Reborn. So, just gotta take a nice drink of Pepsi. This video is not sponsored by Pepsi. It'd be cool if it was, though. Anyway, um, so, so The Flash. Let's talk about that. Uh, so, basically, at the end of the last episode, oh, sorry, you may hear things occasionally that sound like they're from outside the room. Uh, that's my dog. He's probably messing with something. I don't know what's up with my hair today. It's all poofy and stuff. Sorry. Um, so, The Flash. Uh, I did a review of season three of The Flash. You can find that right here is where cards pop up. So, right about here should say The Flash season three review. Um, yeah, that was, it was good. At the end of that season, Barry went into the Speed Force uh, to be its prisoner, and that's kind of where things are now. We've got the rest of Team Flash trying to... Uh, I guess cope with his disappearance, or cope with the loss of Barry, because he's just gone. Um, they're kind of treating it like he's dead, even though they, they're they pretty sure he's not dead. He's just gone. And, um, you know, some of them are, you know, a bit more emotional, I suppose, than others. But, for instance, uh, Iris... Uh, she's not, well, how do I put this? She's being stronger. She's trying to move on. Because that's what Barry told her before he went into the Speed Force. He said, keep running, move on, live your life. And so she's trying to do that. And, jeez. I never noticed this shirt just makes me look like a mountain. Uh, well, that's a little better. I'm also leaned back. I decided to recline, uh in the love seat today. Um, the love seat. Uh, I'm sure that's a, I'm sure that's an actual sofa term, but I don't know, it just sounds funny. The love seat. It's only one of me here, so anyway, you don't care. You're here for the Flash. Let's talk about the friggin' Flash. Uh, we barely have talked about this episode. Um, so, uh, Iris is trying to cope with it. Cisco really wants to bring Barry back. Um, he's secretly been working on a way to bring Barry back. Uh, Joe is doing basically what, what he knows best. He's still being a cop. And, you know, he's, he's trying to live his life, but sometimes it gets to him. Um, Wally, Wally, I don't know. It's like we didn't get a lot of emotional scenes with him, like, at all. Uh, like, it, we don't see, like, a lasting impact from the fact that his, like, superhero mentor is, like, gone. Um, which is something they could have played up, but, to be honest, they haven't really had the best student-teacher, or hero-sidekick relationship. Wally has just kind of been the guy that's there... Wally has just kind of been the speedster that's there when the Flash isn't enough, I suppose. Or when Barry's gone, uh, which happened a couple times in Season 3. So, there's that. Um, Caitlyn, at the end of Season 3, Caitlyn was not Killer Frost and was not Caitlyn, so she was trying to find herself. And she has found herself at a bar. She's working at a bar, which is good. Um... She says that she is Caitlyn, but she's still working through some things, and basically, but she's willing to come back to Star Labs now, and because she comes back to help Cisco find Barry, and um, and then because she had so much fun doing that and she loved being with the team again, she's happy to stick around. But we see at the end of the episode that she still goes a little killer frosty. Um, she even has this line, she, cause there's this guy, he's, he's like about to beat her up because she's like leaving the bar or, and leaving something else. It's not just the bar. Um, 
she's like leaving something else. They never explicitly say, you know, we don't know what it is, you know, powers for hire. Uh, we don't know if she's a mercenary, a prostitute. We don't know. We don't know. We'll probably find out in later episodes. Um, excuse me, my glasses are a bit smudged, so I'm going to fix that. Um, so you get this rare look of me without my glasses. I can't see. <laughs> um, so there's that. But when she's like being attacked by, I guess, her boss, um, she, her eyes you know, start to go a little frosty. Her hair goes completely white. And she becomes Killer Frost again. And she has this line that says, Go ahead, make me frosty. You wouldn't like me when I'm frosty. And I'm just sitting there like, that is the dumbest line I've ever heard, but boy, does she sell it. So yeah, it's stupid, but it's, it's, it's stupid and goofy, but I love that. I love that about comic books and stuff. I'm sorry, I bumped the camera a bit. Um, are my glasses still bad? No, those are just scratches. Well, that's not good either, but... Those scratches don't generally bother me. I'm wondering, must be the light from the window that's making them be more apparent to me. Um, moving on. So, so yeah, we, and when Killer Frost leaves the bar, she starts to turn back into Caitlyn. Her hair changes back to brunette, and she just becomes Caitlyn again. So now it's more of a dual personality thing. So there's something up with her powers. I've never understood why her powers specifically give her the dual personality. But now that it's like an explicit, like a very obvious, I guess basically a Jekyll and Hyde scenario. Um, you, uh, clock, shut up. I almost said computer. Yeesh. Um, now that it's like a more specific Jekyll and Hyde thing, I'm a bit more willing to, uh, to have a story about this, basically. So, I'm curious as to where it goes. Sorry, I'm adjusting myself on the love seat. Anyway, you don't care. Um, so yeah. So, they do get Barry back. Um, I haven't really talked about that. Barry is kind of, he's a bit loopy. And basically, basically, he's speaking nonsense, he's writing nonsense, and he's just not himself. Now, the thing about that is, and he has a beard, which is nice, uh, which they shave off later. Joe shaves his beard off, and I thought, man, we couldn't keep bearded Barry for a while. Oh, well. My beard is really thick lately. I need to do something about that. Um, anyway, um, so... The thing about Barry is that, you know, they say, well, he's just talking nonsense. And um, Caitlin kind of goes into this a bit, but basically he keeps saying things f that he has said before. Like, Mom and I are both okay. He said that, or, or Dad and I are both okay, excuse me. Um, he said that to his mother when he went back in time to try to save her. Um, he's... He said something like, this is going to be the biggest thing in science. Like, okay, he said that just before the particle accelerator exploded. That was in the first episode. So there's a lot of things, like, he keeps saying these things from the past, and they think he's just talking nonsense or he's gone insane. And Caitlin kind of goes into what I thought of, is that, is that the Speed Force is the past, the present, and the future. Eobard Don said that. He's, when Barry was running into the Speed Force to save his mom, Thawne said, what you're seeing is the Speed Force. Your past, your present, your future. All at once. So, and Caitlin says, the Speed Force is beyond space and time. It's its own thing, really. So, basically, it's not that... It's not really that Barry's just crazy, but it's that he's stuck in too many times. He's stuck in all time, basically, and he's trying, and he's still trying. It's not only that he's trying to process it, but he's trying to process it out so that he can become, so he can be Barry again. Like, there's a, he needs something to get him through um, 
all this time that's that he's been a part of for ironically six months i say ironically because he's been a part of all this time but that could have been for an eternity for him because the speed force is beyond time um So, while all this is happening, I forgot to mention the reason that they saved Barry in the first place is that there's a samurai. There's a samurai in Central City, and not just any samurai, um, a super samurai, basically. And, you know, he's got swords that can produce these huge shockwaves, he, you know... He has some wings, like, in his shield or something, and he can fly away. He's basically a super samurai, and he's crazy, and he's like, I want to fight the Flash, and he won't fight Kid Flash. He won't, he even figures out that Wally, like, when Wally dresses in Barry's suit, he even figures out, like, okay, you're not the Flash. You're not good enough. So, so is that. Um, so that's why they have to get Barry out of the Speed Force in the first place. Otherwise, they would probably, you know, leave him there because that's what he wanted. Um, so, basically, things happen. There's a few attempts to stop the samurai. Not, none of them really successful until they get Barry to do it at the end of the episode. And that's mostly because Iris lets the samurai take her prisoner. Like, she basically walks up to the samurai and is like, look, if you want the Flash, he'll come for me. And so the samurai's like, okay. Takes her, flies away. And Joe goes to Barry and is like, Iris in, is in trouble. Iris is going to die. And that triggers Barry. You know, he gets all sparky-eyed and he runs out. He takes Cisco's new suit and he runs over and he stops the samurai and he's all back to normal. Yay! Things are happy. Um, that was a horrible way to clap. Jeez. Um, so yeah, and basically everything's happy. Everything's resolved. Um, I understand if people are upset that Barry wasn't gone longer. Because I heard a lot of people at the end of Season 3 saying, Okay, if he's going to be gone, have him be gone for like half the season. Don't bring him back in the first episode. And well, sure enough, they did. But I feel like there's going to be lasting effects of him being in the Speed Force. Effects that we just don't know right now. So I'm sure it'll work itself out. Um, and that's basically the episode. Um, all in all, it was really good. I had a lot of fun. And it was The Flash. My one complaint is... Last season, who is a prominent character that's missing in this episode? Well, HR. Well, HR died. Harry is not in this episode, which is interesting. I wonder where he went. Um, but whatever, he's on Earth 2, he's doing stuff, whatever. Um, though it is strange that he wasn't in this first episode at all. Yeah, that's weird. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, a character that was in Season 3 that was not in this season was Julian, Julian Albert, play, who was played by Tom Felton, who played Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies. Um, he was a prominent character in season three. He's gone. He's just gone. They say, like, well, Julian moved back to London, so we're shorthanded around here. It's like, what? He's gone? What? What the heck? You can't just ditch the character like that. I like that character. He was a good character. Yes, he was a jerk at first, but he came around and he be he became a great ally and a great character. Gone. Completely gone. We'll probably never see him again. He's just gone. That sucks, man. And he had this whole arc, and he was going to try to help Caitlyn, and he was in love with Caitlyn. He loved her. And he's gone. 
he's just gone. I think my dog wants in. So, so all in all, The Flash was really good. I'm curious to see where it goes. At the end, they do reveal, kind of reveal, I guess, the main villain. Uh, it was kind of confirmed before the season even started, but it's uh, DeVoe. I don't know the name specifically, um, but The Thinker. And he looks ridiculous, but he looks like a fun comic book villain. So it'll be interesting to see where we go with him, especially because like he looks in, like he's in such a futuristic place. It's like we've never had that futuristic a villain. Like that's like so insanely sci-fi and futuristic. So I'm very curious where that's going. And also the fact that he's apparently going to be the first main villain of The Flash that's not a speedster. Which, hey, that's a nice change of pace. So, yeah. That is basically it. End cards are going to pop up right about now. You can click on those. You can follow 7th Hour Films on Twitter at 7th Hour Films. You can also check out my review of S Season 3, Episode 1 of Supergirl. And wait maybe an hour or so after this goes up. And you will see a review of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Season 3, Episode 1. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys then. Take care.